welcome to another episode of our personal empowerment audio program, Finding Yourself in Paradise. Hi, I'm Michael Benner. And I'm Steve Snyder. And our program today is called Centered and Balanced. How to put things into perspective, how to understand what matters more than what. If you're going to balance things, you have to know what they weigh relative to each other. So what matters, what's important to you, that's one of the things we want to look at and how to bring your life and all of your life's areas into balance. I think this is a field or an area, a concept that so-called kinesthetic people will really relate to. These are people that tend to experience their existence and their life in general through a feeling in their bodies. A lot of folks live in their heads. I did this, for example, throughout my youth. I used my body just to carry my head from place to place. I was a real cerebral kind of guy and and create a certain degree of mastery and control by being just cognitive and reasonable and using logic to break everything down. But I didn't have very much access at all to my emotional nature. Actually, feelings were sort of just another kind of thought, right? That's exactly my experience of it. Another thing to think about, Yeah, my emotions. And, of course, emotions are felt in the body, so if you don't feel your body, you're not going to feel your emotional feelings. Body awareness is a term you and I were talking about just the other day, or movement awareness. So you might want to ask yourself here at the top, am I a person that does that naturally, or could I learn to develop that? You can. We'll show you how. But there are definitely benefits of accessing all three, of being smart and an intellectual when it's called for, emotionally sensitive which, hey guys, that's not a weakness, that's a strength. And then to be aware of yourself in your body, how it feels to be in your body, this promotes training and athletics and uh, prevents aging and overall wellness and good health as well. Of course, you also have to look at like balancing the different areas of your life, like your relationships and your career and your health and your prosperity and your you know personal interests and, and the, the things that outside friends and family, all the things that interest you, all the things that you want to put time and energy into into your life. And creating balance is sort of figuring out oh, how much time is going to go to this and how much energy and time is going to go to that. And it's sort of like putting it on the scales and and weighing the two things, like which one weighs more? Well, what it comes down to is which is the most important to you? And that's that's where I think it's real important to take a look at this process of introspection, of reflection, of meditation, of, of asking yourself about yourself. Because in order to really effectively balance your life, it has to start with, what matters the most to me? You know, if I want to create balance, that means that the parts of me that need the most attention are getting the most attention, and the parts that are less important to me that that need less attention are getting less attention. It's not about logic. It's not about what should be more important. It's not about how does the world view, you know, career versus relationship. It's what matters to me right now, and that, where do I need to put my energy? So sometimes a balanced life is 50% in relationship and 50% in the career, and some Sometimes a balanced life is 90% of the relationship and 10% of the career or 10% of the, into the career and 90% of the relationship. Balance doesn't mean 50-50. Balance means how much does it weigh? If the career right now weighs a lot more than the relationship because the relationship's going along smoothly, then you've got to put more inner time and energy into the career or vice versa. It's, it's creating balance, but they're not equal. It's how much does each one weigh? We live in a world that is dual in so many ways with gender, for example, or polarity and electromagnetism. The basic concepts of good and evil or right and wrong get laid over our behavior. And it's real easy, especially under stress, when you're overstimulated and nervous and anxious, to believe that there's only two ways anything can be and that Anything that's different in any way has to be opposite. So anything you don't understand that's just a little different may seem like it's opposing your one right good way. And that becomes a vicious cycle. Don't you see how that then creates even more stress and more anxiety and around and around and around we go? Balance is not the 50-yard line. 
balance, I think of it as journalism, you know, much is made of objectivity, and Fox News tells us it's fair and balanced. I taught journalism on a college level, Mount San Antonio College in Walnut, California, and have gone through a lot of textbooks searching this very question. There's nothing in journalism textbooks about being objective. Those are like corporate policies when you get out into the world. And in a newspaper, for example, there's the news that's supposed to be honestly presented and accurate and certainly fair, but objective, what is that? And then they have the editorial page and the commentary page, the op-ed page, so-called, separating, again, the idea of what's empirically fact from opinion and encouragement to take an action one way or the other. My point is that there's nothing in pure journalism on the academic level that says you have to be objective. What they talk about is accuracy and truth and honesty, not objectivity. And this misunderstanding, this distortion, I think, Steve, of objectivity is always being this perfect 50-50 split like you and your brother fighting over the last piece of dessert, you know. Okay, you cut it, and then I'll choose which one's bigger. The idea, everything in life has to be 50-50. No, it may not fit you at 50-50. You might find 60-40 or 70-30 or some other permutation or variation much more appropriate for the situation. And yet, how would you know but by becoming balanced and centered That's the point where you take the inventory that we're talking about. Where do I, what is appropriate, what's right? How do I integrate my interests? For many people, it's a process of really starting backwards. Instead of looking at, like, what does it feel like to be in balance? It's like, let's start with, where am I obviously out of balance? And there's these two places the word balance is very powerful in our vocabulary. It's like we're supposed to balance our checkbook and we're supposed to have a balanced diet. Now, those are two areas where people mess up a whole lot and are out of balance in their life in terms of their money and in terms of their nutrition and health. It's interesting the word balance is used in both of those cases. How do you balance your checkbook? Or better said, how do you balance your finances? How do you balance your your life so that you have everything you need, most everything you want, and extra that you can help others with? How do you balance your money so that you're not at a survival place of living paycheck to paycheck, but you feel safe today and know that you're getting safer for tomorrow and that you're you know getting the things you want to get in life? And how do you balance your diet? How do you create the right amount of the different kinds of foods and how do you create the way they work best for you? I think those are two areas where our prosperity and our longevity depend a great deal on how we create balance in our lives. We're using balance and centered rather interchangeably. I'd like to call your attention to the fact that balance is rather the either or I was just talking about, the everything or nothing the back and the forth, and then this idea of some sort of 50-yard line in the middle. That's the idea of a balance beam or or a level that is used in construction to get that little bubble balanced in the glass tube is to know that your level or vertical, your plumb. And I think a lot of this, again, leads to the confusion that balance is always the 50-yard line. But a three-dimensional version of balance would be centered. That's really what we're talking about. Centered is in all dimensions where balance is just sort of a two-dimensional back and forth, back or forth, either or. I remember seeing a video from the 60s of Alan Watts at, I think, the Berkeley uh, had an educational television, and the philosopher Alan Watts was doing this series one summer, and a friend of mine had it on videotape. It was fascinating, and Ellen is sitting in a regular chair, and he reaches over and gets a a big beach ball, you know, a couple of feet in diameter, and he sets it down, and he's talking about center of gravity and balance with regard to this ball being centered, balanced, centered. He said, notice how the beach ball, or any sphere, is always over its center. It's always balanced. I can move it around, and he would roll it this way and that. 
And he says, I can't tip it off balance. I cannot take this ball off center. It is by definition a circle, a sphere, always balanced and always over its center. But if I had a box or a pyramid shape, I could easily get it off center. It would fall, it would stumble, it could move unpredictably if I let go of it. And I always remember how important that was to his allegory of leading a balanced life and using the idea of being centered and balanced to assess everything else. To integrate, that's another word, I think, to integrate our lives spiritually, for example, emotionally, mentally, physically, our career, our our committed relationships, our spare time activities. Uh, It's so easy, I think, to feel trapped and resentful that you don't have enough time because, I don't know, I guess we try to do too much, that We lose track of what our priorities are, and we start playing victim to the circumstance. We really have to stand up and assert ourselves and take responsibility for what we're going to put in a proper perspective here and get some balance in this sense also. It comes to asking yourself what matters the most, and I think that's a place that people are afraid to go. That self-exploration, if we're going to create life balance for ourselves, we really have to understand what's more important than what to, to us. And so to go to, you know, how much time and energy is this thing worth to me? How much do I want to do? I think one of the greatest lessons I ever learned was to stop wasting time on things that don't matter very much. And I was uh, one of the wisest things I ever did as a businessman many, many years ago, 30 years ago. Uh, when I first opened up my business, I, I hired David Allen, who now is a world-famous author of uh, Getting Things Done at the time, uh, a new friend of mine. I, I hired him to come into my company and uh, to teach all of my employees how to get their their workplace life in balance, how to how to get everything organized, how to be more efficient with their time and energy, how to how to take things that don't matter and don't spend a whole lot of time on it, how to take things that do matter and figure out what does matter and get the things that really do matter done. It was an amazing experience, and we learned how to take a piece of paper and hand it at once, and we learned how to basically take our lives, look at all the pieces, and decide what's more important than what. And it's just been a a wonderful lifelong process for me ever since. The secret to being in balance, I think, is to understand what matters the most to you. And that changes, you know, as you do. So you can't just say, oh, the answer I had to that, you know, what's more important than what five years ago is the same answer I'm going to have now. This is a constant state of reintrospection, of consistently checking back in with yourself. Does this matter more now? Does this matter less now? I think it's, you know, it's almost interesting to give it a, a, I give it a number, you know, how important is this on a one to 10? I say, oh, this is an eight now, or this mm, this is becoming a nine. But I'm even thinking of like weighing it, like, well, how many pounds is this? You know, give it something substantial so you really get a sense of what this is compared to this. You know, yes, we we have to do all the things in our lives. And when we don't do things, that's when life gets out of balance. And that's the easiest way to deal with it is to just wait until something falls out of balance. And then, you know, you have to deal with it as a crisis. But we're talking about finding a way to bring it all into balance. And to do that, you have to know what's what's really in balance and what's really fading out and out of balance and more and more out of balance in your life. The phrase you just used, life out of balance, I think is an important one to pursue because it has echoes of Native Americans warning the European conquistadors and, and later the the invaders that came west. You have to live a life in balance. If you don't, there's going to be problems because they had all these prophecies that these people were going to come in and not understand balance. So they kill the buffalo for whatever they want and leave the rest to rot rather than the ethic of using every little part, right? And of course, today with the environmental challenges that we face, the loss of species, and and thinking the animals, but also the loss of rainforests and plants. And, you know, extinct is forever. It's an absurdly silly thing to say, except that I think it needs repeating. You, You don't recover something that's become extinct. So a life out of balance is not just a tragic and unnecessary loss of life, but it degrades and erodes our very life support system. 
I remember Bucky Fuller talking years ago in his operating manual for Spaceship Earth about if there was somebody in the spaceship that, for the sake of profit or even convenience, is poisoning the air supply or the water supply on your spaceship, well, there would be some serious repercussions, right? This guy would probably get thrown overboard, and yet that happens every day, whether it's smokestacks or uh, tailpipes or nuclear power reactors venting radiation or, my God, this tragic oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. It seems because I think not enough of us are leading the life in balance that we don't recognize that we're out of balance in all of these other areas as well. I mean, how short-sighted to poison your water and your air and to spray poison on your food and say, well, it's the only way to grow food. Well, that's not true. You know, it's a little more labor intensive. The farms might have to be 200 acres instead of 20,000 acres, but we could grow food that's not poison. And we already have this nuclear power generator 93 million miles away, protected from the radiation by this magnetic shield around the Earth. We can collect that electricity as heat passively, as photovoltaics, as wind, as the tides even. Here in Hawaii, there's a project to generate power with tides, not waves or running water, but tides. Now, that's a pretty amazing concept as well. All of these driven by cosmic forces. That's where the energy comes from. We don't have to burn this disgusting oil anymore. We would know that if we lived a life in balance, and we are knowing that and learning that as increasingly we bring ourselves into a life of balance. In other words, this is not just good for you. This is good for the world. Yeah, balance has to include that it's good for the world, not just good for you, because if it's just good for you, that's kind of out of balance, don't you think? (laughs) So what we're looking at here is... Let's start with the concept of balance on the most basic of levels, and that is within your own mind. You know, like where's the balance between, for example, your thoughts and your feelings? Are you are you run by logic and rational thinking, and and it's your life is just totally dominated by that? Doesn't matter if it feels good or feels bad; it's just the right thing to do or the wrong. Or are you dominated by emotional impulses and it just that feels good to do and I want to do? We we have to learn to balance our thoughts and our feelings, and which how do we use them together? And and which were run by. Some people accuse other people of being like only in their head, and other people accuse other people of being like run by their heart. And people do have a tendency to be more one or more the other. And it's again, it's not a 50 50 game that we're supposed to play. What we're supposed to do is find the appropriate level for each of us to have in the situation that we're in. A lot of it's just a matter of how I express my personality, don't you think? Yeah, that, indeed. that I'm. I'm a more emotional person than you are, perhaps. You're or maybe more... outwardly more emotional. Who knows about how much you're experiencing inside versus how much I'm experiencing inside. Yeah, the hidden potential and the part that's repressed and unexplored for sure. But, yeah, that. in other words, I hear that you're saying to be balanced and to be whole is not to be 50-50, but some variation, and that's part of our uniqueness. We've got the DNA and fingerprint evidence here. We got the proof really with DNA that everyone and everything is unique. The implications of that are pretty profound. Like starting with, well, if there's really nobody to compare me to, then I guess it's my job to find out what it means for me to live a balanced life. That's so important because, again, there's no recipe for it. There's no, this is the way you live. Everybody lives their balanced life. The way you live your balanced life is to prioritize what's more important than what and to do more of the thing that matters the most and to do a little less of the thing that matters the least and put more energy and more passion into the things that matter the most to you. That's that's how you create your balance, to find what what your heart desires and what your mind and and, uh, brain mind and heart mind, your your thinking, logical, rational mind, thinks this is the best for you and it's backed up by that emotional, yeah, that rush of I want to do this. It's not... You're not run by emotion. It's not because it feels good to do it. And you're not dominated by logical thought. It's the right thing to do. What you're doing is looking for 
what feels good that is also the right thing to do. You can find a way to put them two together when you allow your thoughts and feelings to come together. Because although thoughts and feelings do have one major thing in common, and that is they both have the same range from very negative to very positive, you know, thoughts are right and wrong, sometimes a little each, but feelings are weak and strong, and we have a lot of power over our feelings if we allow our feelings to come up, this is what I want, and then think about it, and it makes sense, and it's the right logical thing to do, then we can come back to our feelings and empower ourselves to do what we need to do to make it come true. There's much to be learned from the martial arts, particularly Eastern forms of martial arts, because they come with Eastern philosophies filled with the idea of balance. Taoism, for example. Just look at the symbol of Taoism, those two somewhat sweeping ovals that, to a large extent, are opposites. This white oval and this black oval that sort of sweep around and fit perfectly inside the circle. You know the one I'm talking about. Except that there's a dot of the opposite in each, right? So that at once it is whole, it is part of one circle or one sphere, it has its dichotomy, its polarities, for example, its yin and its yang, those are the terms for those opposite shapes, and yet neither is exclusive of the influence of the other. There's a little dot of the opposite in each. It's a lot like a bar magnet where you have North Pole and South Pole, I mentioned polarities, but they're not really opposites. They're part of this one thing, this third element that's the magnetic field around the bar magnet unifies or harmonizes, if you will, the appearance of opposites into polarities where you're always a little of this and a lot of that or a little of that and a lot of this or maybe near the 50-50, but there's no point on the bar magnet where you're not influenced by both poles. There is no wisdom in looking for absolutes, at least in this world, in this material world. It's the middle that runs from the one-yard line all the way down past the 50, 30, 20, to the opposite one-yard line. That's the middle, everything between the end zones. You have a visual on that? The full sweep of the pendulum, so to speak. These are your options. These are your choices. This is how you integrate yourself and find balance. It's no more likely to be on the 50-yard line than any place else in the playing field. It's just there's no game in the end zone. Stop with the absolutes, the everything or nothing. <laughs> you're not serving yourself. You're not serving the world. So another way to know that we're in balance is if we're telling the truth to ourselves and to the world because anytime you're not telling the truth, you're automatically out of balance because, you see, truth is relatively, it's easy, it's consistent, it's stress-free, it's light where lies are very heavy, lies weigh a lot. So anytime you have lies going on, then your life is out of balance because every time you have to say anything, is it does it fit with that last thing I said? Does it, you know, you have to do a lot of this working on, is this going to be consistent with the other lies that I've told? So... To create feeling balanced, feeling centered, you have to have a freedom from worrying about, am I going, what lie do I need to make up next? You know, the truth will flow, the lies I have to create. So there's, I think, a lot of out of balance people who lie to themselves and make their decisions based on these lies that they've made to themselves, and therefore their life becomes all kinds of out of balance. They make these lies themselves like, well, so-and-so needs me and could, would, would die without me and I have to devote my whole life to so-and-so and you make a decision like that and then every, every decision you make consistent with that thought you know, takes your life down this path of being completely and totally out of balance and you end up with dis-ease. It's just balance is knowing what's really true inside of you. So once you're lying, if you're lying to yourself, then you're going to follow a path that doesn't lead to feeling centered, doesn't lead to becoming whole. So it's really about finding the balance in your life by telling the truth, by knowing the truth and telling the truth to yourself. Steve, I'm fascinated personally by the idea that lying is stressful. I've mentioned this to other people, and they don't seem to understand my curiosity about it. But if by gauging 
the responses to anxiety and danger, right? Tight muscles, respiration rates, pulse, blood pressure, galvanic skin response. What else do they measure? Blood heart, volume. Heart rate variability. Yeah, uh, skin temperature. All of these are corollaries to how safe or how endangered do I feel. And when people lie, it's detectable as if it were dangerous to do so. The response to lying is exactly the same as the response to danger. So if somebody lies, even if they are a liar, even if they're a committed, dedicated, I have no interest in ever telling the truth. I don't even care what the truth is. I'm just a liar. It's still detected easily by these sensitive machines because the liar's body feels endangered by the lie. With the exception of the rare sociopath. But yeah, that, yeah, exactly. Who doesn't know right from wrong. Right, right. Yeah, they're not much good with lie detectors. And that exception alone is probably why you can't use the results of a lie detector test in courts of law. But they're good for investigation, and they're even great for some kind of self-divination and understanding. We can use low-tech biofeedback like these cards that measure your skin temperature or these little devices called Wheatstone Bridges that measure your galvanic skin response. And you can find out on your own easily, inexpensively, uh, just how stressed or how relaxed you happen to be. It's sort of funny because lie detectors don't measure lies. They measure how much you scare yourself when you say one. Yeah, <laughs> you know? Exactly. I mean, what does that mean? What What is the implication of that if our body starts getting frightened as if there is a danger in us lying and that's built in, that's hardwired? Doesn't it suggest that we're basically good people? I'd like to think so. I always have. I always thought that because it always, fe- except for, again, that rare person, it always feels good to tell the truth. And, and somehow, every time you lie, there's a little part of you that feels bad about it. I mean, sometimes a big part of you that feels horrible about it. It depends on the situation. But there's some, there is a conscience. It exists. There is a thing inside of us that, that, you know, that says this is good and this is not good. And I don't think we need to even be necessarily... Uh, told that that comes from any special outside universe. It could be something that's inside of us. But you know, of course, a lot of it's a lot of it's taught. You know, I mean, we're we're trained in certain behaviors for sure. But but still, there is a part of us that just feels good when we do things that are right, and feels good when we tell the truth. You know, it feels really. It's a relief to tell the truth. It, everybody's had experiences where telling the truth ended with wonderful results, and everybody's had experiences where lying ended with terrible results. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty basic thing we need to see. So to create balance in our lives, it's, it's a lot about truth. It's a lot about honesty. It's a lot about integrity, and, and integrity, that finding that balance point in, in, in every area of your life. Because if you become too, oh, too wrapped up in any one area of your life so that you, you neglect and, and get hurt, by the places that things fall through cracks in other areas of your life, that's clearly a sign of being out of balance. We have to take a look. Yeah, there. it could be that right now this one area of my life, it, it's dominating. It's the thing I need to put most of my attention on. But that doesn't mean I can ignore other areas of my life. I, I, I have to do at least the minimum at all times in every other area of my life that needs attention. So balance always includes not becoming uh, totally focused on only one thing and and leaving everything else to go. It can become, one thing can become by far the most important thing, but I think balance always includes that awareness of of all the other semi, maybe less, but still semi-important things going on in our lives. I'm really glad you brought up the whole topic of truth because this, again, is part of a larger philosophy, the ageless wisdom or the perennial philosophy, if you will, basic mysticism, a lot of it Eastern philosophy, but it's in Jewish mysticism and Christian mysticism and Sufism of Islam as well. This idea of a middle way. Here we're talking about balance. We're talking about being centered. We're talking about staying away from absolutes and and finding variation and 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 permutation and and choice and expressing ourselves as unique individuals through this blending of qualities and 
All of this in Eastern philosophy and mysticism in general is called the third way, and that truth and love and wisdom is always found in the middle, never in the extreme. Now, you might think that being really smart is choosing which extreme is correct and which opposite is wrong. But we find out from the wisdom teachers, from the women and men, whose ideas have stood the test of time in all cultures, that wisdom is in the middle. It's a matter of fine-tuning, of finding the balance, or here's a crazy word, appropriateness. Hopefully this will come back. 30 years ago, we had in California a governor, Jerry Brown, he's running for governor again, who, uh, in fact, his father was governor, sort of a dynasty kind of a thing, but he established an office at the state level of government called OAT. And OAT was the Office of Appropriate Technology that challenged the idea that bigger is always better and it's okay to be too big to fail. That's the new word for this idea, and that more is always better. You know that bias in your own life. And sometimes we're confronted by the people that do believe in absolutes and saying, well, you've got to accept it the way it is, bigger and bigger and bigger and more out of balance, or we're going to what? Go back to the 19th century and you've got to hook up the horse to the wagon and Read by kerosene lamps, no TV, no video games, or we got to do it exactly as we're doing. Be careful of that kind of stuff in your life. The truth is in the middle someplace, See? not the 50-yard line. And again, even if we just talk about balance, you have to consider that third dimension and, and feel kinesthetically what is centered, not just this or that, but in all dimensions, in all aspects of my life. How can I balance my role in ecology with the environment? How can I balance my relationship with technology versus nature? A little technology is nice, but too much I get crazy. and I need some nature in my life. How do I balance the amount of time that I spend with other people, real quality time, versus my need to have time alone? Maybe you didn't even know you qualified to have some alone time, but you do. Most people want it or need it. How do you find that balance? From the center. That's where you take the inventory. And do you do that while you're busy thinking 10 other thoughts and driving down the freeway and running around? No, we always suggest you go to paradise to open yourself to the inventory of what makes me whole an inventory that we take from the center of things. And so where we begin whole and centered as newborns, it, it's not long in terms of our body before we sort of choose a side. Most people become right-handed or left-handed. There are some who remain ambidextrous, but most people tend to make one side stronger and therefore the other side becomes weaker. Now, you're not out of balance just because one side's a little stronger and the other side's a little weaker. That's normal. Most people do have one side that's stronger. But if it gets farther and farther out of balance and one side becomes stronger and stronger and starts to do the work for the other side and the other side gets weaker and weaker and looser and looser, at some point when you're about 30% out of balance, the discs in your spine slip and something really bad happens. We can be in balance without being perfectly balanced right and left. But if we get too far out of balance to the right, one side gets way stronger and the other side gets way weaker, then uh, eventually the thing will break. You know, We need to stay physically in balance through exercise. We need to stay physically balanced through the, the nutrition we get. And something we haven't mentioned yet, we need to balance the activity in our lives with the right amount of sleep as well. So there's a lot of places we need to focus on staying balanced so that we don't get so out of balance we, we hurt ourselves. Yeah, I think every area, again, what benefit is there in being out of balance unless it's a, a crisis or emergency or situation, some aberration in your life, you may need to go way out of balance to a place you've never been before. But again, the decision to do that should come from the center. 
And as soon as the extreme situation is over, you return to the... I, I think even if we go out in this direction or that direction, we're really doing it from a sense of wholeness. If we remember, that's home base, the center. You can think of this even physically as a place in the middle of your body, somewhat behind the navel, and, of course, midway in the torso. Imagine if a super, super strong man had one finger pointed up in the air and you could be balanced by the super strong man on a single finger. Where would he put that finger so that you'd be perfectly balanced? And it would be in the so-called midsection, obviously. The solar plexus, it's sometimes called. It's, it's not far from the navel. And I'd like to suggest we go to paradise and we can explore how it feels to go to that place. And then I think it'll be easier to have a mental image and an emotional sense of what it means to be balanced and centered once we create the, the kinesthetic feeling, the body awareness. You want to do that? Sure. What better place to feel centered and balanced than in the center of balance? So that's where we're going to go. A place uh, inside that we like to call paradise, and it begins as you leave the outside behind and close your eyes and take a deep, deep, deep breath. Hold at the peak. And then as you release, the idea of paradise is accompanied by a feeling of peace. All the tension does release. Anxiety it too does cease, and confusion abates, the mind now creates clarity, so clear, in this peaceful place, this paradise place, right now, right here. Feeling very safe and very relaxed as if you were floating in water on your back, or maybe floating on a cloud, almost as if you're weightless. Your cares and your worries, troubling thoughts and turbulent emotional feelings just fall away for now. As you put your attention on how it feels to be safe, and to be this wonderfully relaxed. For example, lift your awareness to the space around your ears and feel how that area droops or sags a little bit as you relax the scalp. You see, isn't that amazing? And then even the forehead and the face, you can feel the letting go in that space around the ears. And then imagine that feeling sweeping down through the center of your being, along the spine, but like a warmth gently spreading out to include your shoulders and your arms all the way to the tips of your fingers, down through the center of your body, past your hips, all the way to the tips of your toes and the soles of your feet feeling this wonderful feeling of being safe, warm, and relaxed. And with that comes balance. Feel centered, clear. The feeling that everything is just right, right here. Calmness, clarity, feeling that it's right. Feeling centered, feeling balanced, feeling free, feeling light. Imagine living balanced with all things in their place and knowing what's the most important 
in every single case. And you know how to prioritize. You know how to choose where to put your time and your energy. You have the tools that you can use. So you keep yourself in balance. You keep the ship upright. You keep everything floating just right through the night. And you sleep well, and you eat well, and you exercise and take care and create balance in your life. Balance everywhere. I'd like to suggest that it's really easy for you to notice right now where you tend to live in your body. Are you in your body now as a result of Steve's suggestions? Or are you still in your head? Or perhaps lost in some emotional place? Gently form the intention to bring yourself to the very center of your body. It may feel like the solar plexus or the abdomen. You may find it in the pit of your stomach. You may feel it as if it's a little higher, moving almost as if aspiring to the heart. But notice how easily, without moving a bit, you can tune your instrument. You can adjust back and forth like a violin or a cello or guitar, remembering that a string too loose will not sound. A string too tight will break. A string too loose may be flat, one too tight, perhaps too sharp. Find your center by just feeling around intuitively as you tune the instrument. And you'll hear when the tone, when the pitch, and you'll feel somehow in your body that place, as if there's a little resting place for your awareness, right there in the middle. And with this balance comes agility, dexterity, and grace. With this balance, you're able to put each thing into its place. With this balance, you understand where to invest your time. And with this balance, the things that don't matter, those things you never mind. Focus on what matters the most, what says inside your heart. Whatever it is that matters the most, that's the place to start. And create balance to ensure that everything else handled too, but... Focus your passion on what matters most to you. That's the balance to put your power where it's most needed to create the outcome you choose. Create balance by seeing that everything else that you have to do is handled too, but that doesn't mean 50-50. It's not the way it works. It's how much does this thing weigh? That's where you put your energy today. How much does this one weigh? How important is this right now today? That's where you've got to say, this is the way. I'm going to put my energy here today. Having found the point of balance in the center and felt around, taking inventory 
of which changes you choose to bring yourself back into balance in all regards, in all respects. Simply bring the overall integrated sense of wholeness with you back into the room. The feeling of wholeness integrated from your center where you are balanced. You bring that feeling with you. As you think about what you'll see in just a moment when I ask you to open your eyes, remember the room in which you sit. Feel the chair or the pillow supporting you. Take a nice, slow, deep breath, inhaling. Fill your lungs. Hold as you peek. And now, gently, as you exhale, ah, bring that wholeness back into the room, wide awake, alert, feeling fine, all rested, energized, and dare I say, balanced, centered, and complete. Just like that. So we're talking about having a, a, a big picture of all the aspects, all the parts, so you understand what you've got to work with, so you can balance all those pieces out. And what weighs more than what? You know, one of the exercises I've always enjoyed doing was asking myself, well, what's the most important thing? And now what's the next most important thing? And, and just, just going through the list of all those things that are in my life that I need to do. And in, in today's world, in this, this moment in time, what's more important? That's, that's one of the ways I, I find my balance because my passion wants to go in that place where I'm most passionate about. And so to stay balanced, I've got to give that passion, that outlet to, to do what it most wants to do. You know, I've got to tell a quick little story that you told me the other day that, that I love this. And this is a, the story for John, actually. Um, <laughs> I, one of our subscribers was listening to one of these audio programs, and he said that in one of the guided imageries, in one of the alpha exercises, I said his name. I said, for John. And and uh, he said that to Michael. And Michael said, no, that that's not true. I mean, I've heard them all, and I edited them. I, you know, I know that he never said for John. And 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 he said, yeah, I've listened to a whole bunch of things. It says for so, so Michael said, well, which show is it? And he said, and, and what part of the show? So Michael listened to it and finally realized what I said was, F O R G E O N for John, <laughs> but I said for John, and it sounded exactly like for John. So for John, this story was for you. And and yes, apparently we do customize shows now. So that was your question. Thanks for being with us. Tell your friends about this. Forward the newsletter. There's a link at the bottom of every newsletter. A single mouse click, and off it goes to people that you know who would really value receiving that reminder. And. In the same way, as a subscriber, go to the website, focusedpassion.com, log in, you just need your email and a password, and use the share one with a friend gadget there. You're paying the three ninety six a month. That includes the right to forward as many of these programs as you'd like, as often as you want to, as many different people as you'd like. So do that. Let's get the word out. Share the wealth. This is important information. This is liberating information. This is freedom, and most of all, a freedom from fear. If you knew you could help your friends feel safe with practical, portable, and effective tools and techniques, why would you hesitate? Remember the ED. That's the W's.FocusedPassion.com. As always, be gentle, love life, and take care of each other. For Steve Snyder. This is Michael Benner. Aloha from Maui. <laughs>